blew from the whale's blowhole like a supersonic jet. And below me, the ocean became a sheltered bay studded with white shapes. You will be amazed as my epic journey unfolds. For here, it was about to take a most unexpected turn. And it happened like this. a beautiful but deadly wasteland, a freezing cold, brutally chilling, enough to kill a man in hours. Yet here you are. Indeed, General. An impoverished childhood playing in the streets of Omsk during those bitter winters had made me hardy. I thought you said you grew up in Altai. Ah, General, the life of a poor toy maker's family. Uh, we had to move from place to place just to find work.
Sonikov learned, eh? Of course, Sonikov himself reported nothing more than a bluish fog on the horizon. Your island may be nothing more than the product of overactive imaginations. General, consider this. Imagine taking a simple peasant, a pig shepherd, for example, and telling him one day humans would fly around the earth beyond the sky. He would say you were stark raving mad, sell the phone. A ridiculous Kaziol Baradati. A buffoon stuffed into a military uniform. A Pridurak. A Chuchila Tuparile. This peasant of yours had better watch his mouth if he doesn't want to spend his holidays in Salavietsky. Perhaps you should return to your store. There, in the cliff, I could not believe it. A hairy elephant, trapped and frozen in the ice. A mammoth? No, General, a hairy elephant. Who would think such a thing could be? Onwards through the blizzard, one foot grimly in front of the other, blinded by the snow, my nose becoming quite blue. My thoughts of home crushed under the weight of the plummeting temperature. I am bored, Ivan Ivanovich, and sick to my teeth of listening to this rubbish. Let us speak plainly now. You will tell me where my bomb is, or I will have you shot. I am just getting to that, General. Shot! Comrade Primal! Shot with real bullets. Fired from a real gun, not some ludicrous Bultavia about the uh, lost cities and dinosaurs and mink and mammoth. That was a hairy elf. No! I will not tolerate any more! Where is the bomb, Ivan Ivanovich? Where is little Orpheus? It was right there. What? It was there. Uh, at least, uh, I realized it must be. Where? Here? On Sonic Land? Yes, General. Uh, because as the storm began to clear, I realized with a strange excitement and trepidation that I was not alone on Sonic Land. Wait, 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 wait. Go back. You say these lifeboats came from Zaria. 
A Russian ship? Zarya returned home, but not with all of her crew. And here were the missing lifeboats, trapped in the ice for all of these years. And it could only mean one thing. That you are continuing to hang lapsha on my ears. Baron Edward von Toll. Of course, I remember reading about this tragic expedition at school. We were taught he had died a hero's death out on the icy wastes, searching for Sanika Flat. Yet, what if, what if, in doing so, he had sailed accidentally into the interior, deep below the crust of the world? A fellow citizen of the surface. I had to try and find him. My but not dead, General, but quite insane. Perhaps it was the loss of the arm or the leg, or the long years in isolation. But Toll was clearly mad. You should have got along perfectly then. <laughs> How I wish we had. But no, whatever Toll's intention with little Orpheus was, I had no time to consider it. I was in mortal peril once more. So, you believe that Toll had somehow enslaved the Mienkir and bent them to his will? I do, General. It was obvious. Why else would they serve him? And how else could they be so different from their free comrades? These odd helmets they wore, it was the science of our times. No doubt about it. Although, fused with some strange crystal technology I could not recognize, to be honest with you, it didn't seem appropriate to stop and ask them.
this though. You say he was an explorer? Yes, General, he was. He vanished some 60 years ago. I remember the story. Though. And you say he stole little orphan? To get home, General, to get home. I think he must have thought he could use the atomic bomb to blast his way back to the surface. Oh, <laughs> brilliant, Ivan Ivanovich! And you expect me to believe that a hundred-year-old madman not only survived below the Earth's crust, but enslaved this Minkiv, explored the lost worlds, and discovered the secrets of atomic power all by himself? A czarist general! An imperialist, no doubt harking back to the terrible days before the Great Revolution. And Estonian. Estonian? Estonian, General. Hmm. There are wily people. away into the distance, and I sometimes wondered if I would ever find my way out. But I never gave up, General. Of course you didn't. You are a hero, Ivan Ivanovich. No, General. No, 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 no. I am no hero. I am a simple toy maker's son from Tomsk. Omsk, General? Omsk. You said Tomsk. I said Omsk. You said Tomsk. <laughs> General, I think I am well aware of the city of my birth. Perhaps all the moving around as a child confused you.
on we flew across the deserted frozen plateau. I was single-handed in my pursuit, dogged in my determination. On we flew across the deserted frozen plateau. I was single-handed in my pursuit, dogged in my determination. I would take back little Orpheus and prevent Toll from detonating the bomb. Ah, you are as humble as ever, Tavares. Well, General, you are a great military leader, a great strategist, whereas I am simply the humble son of a watch toy, a toy maker, and driven by patriotic fever with no regard for my own safety. I rushed blindly on. Will our courageous yet unfortunate hero drown in the depths of an inhospitable frozen sea? Will he thaw out in time to prevent Tall from detonating the bomb? Will the general holiday in Omsk next year? Or Tomsk? Or perhaps both? What exactly is the difference between a mammoth and a hairy elephant? All of these questions and more should almost certainly be answered in the next exciting episode of Little Orpheus! Thank you.